Well, it is a, it is a duopoly, um, and uh, in my home state, uh, I believe in bringing people together. I just didn't really realise it was the Liberal and Labor parties uh, in the last uh, a few weeks uh, in terms of South Australia. So I think, you know, it, it is. You a mean pretty close you're bringing them together to try and stop you? Is what you mean? Exactly. Right. And uh, at least I brought them together. Um, so I think the the issue, the issue is that. Um, um, it is tough to break through. It's tough to break through into a lower house seat, for instance, but I'm hoping we can in South Australia. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. Mm. Uh, Steve Chobo, you, I'm sure you want to respond to the uh, Coles sure. and Woolies jibe and, uh, and the various comments made about Malcolm oh, Just Turbot. because, I mean, I actually think that uh, Richard and, and, and Nick's attitude is uh, really arrogant, to be blunt. Mm. Um, it's an attitude <laughs> that says, Seriously. you know, yeah, I do. I think it's really arrogant because it's an attitude that says to the vast majority of Australians who find a common set of values and principles with the major parties, you're basically, the two of you are sitting there saying, you know what, you're not that smart, you're getting caught up in the hype and the marketing, and you actually need to realise that there's more to politics than what the two majors represent. I'll tell you why the two majors are the two majors. It's because we share values and we share a policy platform that most Australians identify with. Um, Richard, most Australians don't identify with Greens policies. They're not in favour of legalising drugs. They're not in favour of opening up our borders to bring in as many people as possible members. from overseas. They that's actually the want strong border sovereignty. They want strong border protection. And that's the reason why they will support the Labor Party, the Liberal Party, in stronger numbers than they will your party. And, mate, you can sit there and be arrogant about it and say, well, that's because they're just not that smart. But, I mean, the reality is, mate, the reason they get behind the majors is because of those common values. All right, you get a quick response to that, yes, and then we'll move you on. You just need to look at what's happening to the major party vote. It's been shrinking election after election after election. And we're having... I'm sure the issue will come up at some point tonight, the question of multi-party government. That will be a regular feature of Australian politics because the growth of the Greens and independents continues with each election because people are sick and tired of the old parties and let me tell you, the main issue with breaking through is we don't have people who go into a polling booth and say, I'm voting for the Greens or for Nick Xenophon because my grandfather did it and I, my, my mother did it and that's who I am. That identity politics is breaking down. You just need to look at the vote amongst young people. If there was a vote amongst people who are under 30 in Australia, there'd possibly be a Greens Prime Minister. And our time is coming. Uh, and the reason it is, is because nothing brings you closer together than the threat from outside. And rather than suggesting that standing for an election is arrogant, what we're doing is we're giving people a choice. And they so desperately want a choice right now. Richard, okay, you right. weren't at the debate because you... <laughs> you were not at the debate because you are not vying to become the Prime Minister. You are not at the debate because you do not have the capacity to become the Prime Minister after this federal election. There's a choice. He's in the Senate, for a start, and he's got one member of the House of Representatives out of 150. Well, and that's why he went at the debate. And well, people have got a serious choice to make here. A choice between two people, one of whom is going to lead this nation, choice between a government that's going to make big cuts to services and hand over money to foreign investors and big corporations and someone else who's actually got capacity to do real work to save the reef. I think, uh, by the way, just, uh, just, we, have to, we have to move on, but I will make one point. That is that John Gorton was in the Senate and came down and became That's Prime right. Minister. Well, um, and let's move on. Let's move on. No, you can't. 